It's okay. a curse. It's, it's it's something that we don't do. You are actually now. Let me know, black people, black people, <laughs> black people from America. <laughs> My name is Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 217 of How, How Married, Married Are you? you? Okay, my name Belief. What the heck? My name Belief. This is Yvette. We married 13 years. Live in California. We got four, four kids. kids. Relationship scary. It's very necessary. We share our love, our struggles. We ask How, How Married, Married Are You? Every Tuesday and Thursday, shawty. If you're listening, you're in the wedding party. It's okay if you want to put your hands up. You got the questions, we got the answers. It's chocolate baby story time. Chocolate baby story time. It's chocolate baby story time. One, two, three, and. It's chocolate baby story time. Yo, this past Friday, it was Theo's birthday. And. We are driving up to Anaheim to watch the Anaheim Ducks game. Those tickets are so expensive. If you're trying to go the week of and you buying a ticket the week of, some of them tickets were like fifteen thousand dollars. I could no not... fifteen hundred. Did you say fifteen thousand? I think you meant fifteen hundred. I'm pretty sure they were fifteen thousand dollars. I don't Who's know. Who's spending fifteen thousand dollars to go to a hockey game? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. <laughs> I think you mean fifteen hundred. Nah, baby, I, I think I'm. Not, I'm not, I don't think I'm tripping. Um. Anyway, the, the tickets were so expensive. We got the row second to last in the back, <laughs> and the nose bleeds. Those tickets were so expensive still, and I'm mm. like, ah, why am I doing this? Ah, the seated smile on the child's face. <laughs> we went to go see the Anaheim Ducks versus the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Oilers. And the Edmonton Oilers has Theo's favorite player on it. And I didn't even know. <laughs> I just bought the tickets and he was really excited. Thanks for taking me here, Dad. Mm. He's like he's like such a um, Disney kid. I really appreciate the hard work you're doing, Dad. No, he, he I think he's heard me enough times <laughs> be like, y'all don't even appreciate da, 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 that he's become really good at saying like, Thank you. Like, he's usually one of the first ones to say, Mom, thank you for breakfast. Thank you for lunch. Thank yeah. you for dinner. You know, he's really a good. Yes, yes. And he's good at that. Is it my turn? Yes. So, um, this weekend, we were at Raya's basketball game. And every time after the basketball game, parents have to bring snacks or whatever for the team. Well, Uzi always wants to see what's in the bag that he can have. So, this weekend, he went into the bag and he got a... Um, a lollipop and we're all standing around talking and then all of a sudden Uzi is just losing his mind turns out his lollipop was in his hand and Lily came by and wagged her tail <laughs> yeah. and the lollipop stuck to Lily's tail and he was so upset the poor baby he was crying and all kinds of things and Glenn was all like what is going on and um yeah it was really funny to me yeah I told him he overreacted Eva didn't like that yeah and we still didn't follow up to that conversation we'll talk about it later though yeah all right all right so look man not not a lot of time left you guys got to get these tickets for the unplugged retreat my wife is hosting mm -hmm. super excited um man moms need a break moms need to rest and you probably don't give yourself permission to rest you probably uh oh overworked um definitely underpaid you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. definitely uh doing everything for everybody else and not taking care of yourself so mother's day from the 10th to the 13th my wife is hosting a retreat at uh may 10th through the 13th at savannah resort man this is a wellness retreat that you are going to enjoy baby you want to tell me more about it since you went yeah i'd love to tell you guys more about it the resort itself is a beautiful location nestled in carefree arizona which is about 30 to 45 minutes away from phoenix arizona so if you're in the arizona area you might want to just pull up one time but it is a beautiful location it's got beautiful pools um, it's quiet. 
the skies are clear. The sunset is amazing. The sunrise is amazing. It is just wonderful. They have multiple wellness classes for you to be able to explore from fitness classes to mindfulness classes to all kinds of things. Um, I did. I want to tell a story. I don't know if I've told the story yet. Okay. Have I told the story about how I signed up for a dance class? Yeah. So I did. I told the story on the podcast. I remember I was dancing. On the podcast? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Tell again. Yeah. So that was probably one of my highlights. I signed up for the class thinking it was like a hip hop dance class where I was going to learn some routine and I was going to come home and I was going to be like, see, Glenn, I do have rhythm. I can dance. Da, 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 da. Right. I pull up to the class one time. It is called an ecstatic dance class. I'm like, what do you mean? And then she proceeds to explain that what happens is they turn on music and then they just tell you to be free and move your body and do all the things to, you know, feel the music. And I wanted to run away. And this older couple convinced me, you know what, you should stay. It's going to be great. It's so fun. So I hid in a corner. <clears throat> Thankfully, they dimmed the lights. Everyone was supposed to like either close your eyes or have a soft glance, they call it, where you don't like look at people, but you just kind of or, you know, your eyes are open, but you're not paying attention. And so at first I was doing like my little one, two sidestep that you used to do in the gospel choir. And then at some point, like I just started really moving my body. <laughs> and it sounds really crazy. And it probably was really crazy. Like if anyone has video footage of it, I'm sure we're all going to be like, oh my gosh. However, like in that moment, it was probably the most present I had been with my body in such a long time. And one of the things I took away from that particular class was you don't have to be perfect to be enough. And I think a lot of times, especially when it comes to dance and moving my body, I don't necessarily feel like I can move it because I don't have the rhythm that a lot of other people might have or maybe a lot of people don't have. And I think that at some point in our life, we were told that, oh, this is how you're supposed to move your body or this is the acceptable way to move your body. But it's like, no, it's my body. Mm. <laughs> I can move it however I want to or however I need to. But it was classes like that. I also did like introduction to meditation. I did gratitude circle. I did um, a trampoline class that was extremely fun. I did. I had like a um, I tried a yoga class. As well, it was just like a lot of cool things. And so what I'm planning on doing is there's a whole wide range of different classes that you guys can choose when you sign up and you don't choose it right away. So if you sign up and you're like, hey, I didn't get those classes yet. It doesn't happen until it gets closer to May. But um, I am also wanting to infuse some like praise and worship and just some time with each other. I'm hoping I, I haven't said this yet. Um, but I'm wanting to do a Bible study. And of course, none of this stuff you have to show up to. If you want to just book the trip and then just come and sleep in your room and sit by the pool the whole time, that is totally up to you. I am mm. not trying to make your time scheduled, but I am going to be creating space. And one of the things that I'm hoping to do is to actually write um, a three-day Bible study for you guys to participate in and kind of meet me at the lawn on those mornings or whatever the case may be. Um, and so it's going to be an amazing time to be able to connect with yourself, to be able to connect with God and to be able to connect with other moms who are growing through some things just like you. And so I really hope that you guys receive this invitation and that you register. Early registration ends uh, February 29th and then tickets go up. So if you're like kind of on the fence about it, I would suggest that you just pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, there is a payment plan available through PayPal later. So if you're like, I don't have it all right now, maybe just sign yourself up for like the, it's four monthly payments um, through PayPal. So yeah, y'all, don't, don't waste time. If you are somebody who needs rest and who needs a moment for yourself, take this time, take this time, okay? Yep. Um, yeah, so we have a someone who sent in a voice memo. Yeah, it's quite a doozy. Yes. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into this one. Before we do, though, make sure you like, comment, and share this video with everybody. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, um, the sound is not obstructed because I'm driving and I'm driving to work. I'm giving myself five minutes to do this because I did try to type out a message before. But I had a feeling it was a too long. I'm a big rambler, so. I almost typed out a whole notes message I was gonna send you guys 
to discuss about this situation um, because you, sometimes you guys talk about how you're not really you're not really up to what the young kids are doing these days and at the time when I almost emailed you guys I um, was definitely not over it <laughs> I feel like I'm more over the situation now definitely more calm about it and just kind of want to tell the story so you guys can sort of see I guess what people my age are up to um, also big fan I've been watching you guys for years I listen to you guys as if you're my second parents and I take a lot of the stuff you guys say into account but basically here is like a current situation ship which is apparently very common for people my age these days that I was in last year so we're gonna call the guy Bill that's not his real name but we're just gonna call him Bill and in January even before then during the fall semester before he started um, kind of making his interest in me known and then in January we started talking and then like a week or two into January he invited me to come over and he made dinner for me obviously it seems like a date you know but I guess it wasn't defined so we'll just say he made dinner for me and then from then on I was hanging out with him a lot like I was at his apartment a lot and we were just hanging out very often I think I always update my friends on stuff and one time he had made a comment on like oh you're wearing the same socks today or something like that's how often I was at his place and even my friends were like oh my god you must be there often if he's like paying attention to the socks you're wearing and stuff so I was at his place a lot and then eventually I think around February he um we kind of had that com conversation that's like what are we and the conclusion was we are nothing <laughs> but um basically he let me know that he wasn't ready for a relationship but also conveniently for him if he if we if I was interested in anything physical that he could provide but relationship wise um he couldn't do that and I was very put off by it at the time but I can't lie I was also I was looking for some physical when I started interacting with this guy so but obviously the whole situation of like basically dating me and then literally whining and dining me and then claiming you weren't ready for a relationship was very strange and um yeah so I was just a little bit put off by it and we basically didn't really speak to each other for like a month hold on she wanted something physical a month later hold on hold on hold on she wanted something physical yeah but I'm trying to just I, I I was wondering, did I miss a part where she said that they were physical, maybe? I mean, obviously they were. They're over each other's house. He's, she's over there all mm -hmm. the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not make it more difficult than it already is. Like, they they have already been physical. He got what he wanted. And it's it, now she's like, well, she's like, well, you know, what are we? And he's like, I'm not ready for anything in a relationship, but I want, you know, something, is there anything physical I could provide? <laughs> but she said I got into it physically as she, well. Yeah, okay, let's let's right. listen, let's listen. Mm, baby, I'm so disappointed. You still kind of randomly text me. You let like, that man play like, interact with my social media, and I was like, that's kind of weird because we're not talking, but whatever. And then I think one day he texted me again, and I was like, okay, what do you want? Because we were not speaking, but you're still, like, in my phone and stuff, so what do you want? And he's like, do we have a problem, da 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 Because I guess in his eyes, that conversation was that and, or whatever. Even though clearly we were both upset at each other, but he was just like, I don't know. So then, um, we talked again, and long story short, we agreed to Friends with Benefits, which, okay. you know, yeah. <laughs> Okay. You are so old fashioned. I am. You need so old fashioned. You need to get out of here. Wait a minute. What do you mean I'm so old fashioned? That's a normal thing. What you think everybody's doing out there? Okay, I guess that's why she said she was calling and letting us know. Why do you she seem said, like your little sister let you down? You because I just want more for my sister. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to keep listening because we still got a few Women minutes. Women have physical <laughs> needs too, but you know that. Wait, what happened? Long story short, we agreed to Friends with Benefits, which... She said like she did not want to say know, that. <laughs> she did yeah. it. <laughs> so that continued until basically like April. Um, and this is, I don't know, I don't know how to stay on track, but I'm at my 
parking lots work so i'm trying to wrap it up but i will say there's a lot of bickering sometimes there's a lot of back and forth but it was also very much like dating but not actually dating very strange um we go to the same school so it was getting to the point where people were um seeing us around and um i would even hear from other people like that we were dating even though we weren't and it was it was very strange and um over the summer i was on co-op so we didn't really talk that much and then the semester started in the fall and i was just like oh we're just gonna go back to our little friends with benefits situation and yeah also um for the whole friends with benefits situation i very much considered him a friend we had like very real conversations when we did have disagreements um we tried our best to communicate super well and i always appreciated that but also i don't know if it's because we're young or we both have issues i started therapy so i'm straightening it out but <laughs> our communication I, 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 we always man. tried so i did consider us really good i started therapy so i'm fit she's sorting it out but so you know she's not though no, I think she is. We have we still have two minutes and thirty seconds well, listen, to listen to. You know when it when you go to therapy, it gets way worse before it gets better. Yeah. So she's figuring out that she's got a lot to figure out. Yeah, you know I feel saying? like she's figuring out why she allowed herself to end up in this situation. I feel like she's getting a lot of insight, and she's about to tell us she has ended this relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay let's listen we always tried so i did consider us really good friends and so the fall comes and we're still not really talking but he was taking a lot of classes so i just assumed he was busy or whatever and then around october he um popped up with a girlfriend and <gasps> i was very shocked and yeah so overall i i just ended up not no longer speaking to him after that point i just found it weird considering we were friends that at the very least you could mention to me that you had a girlfriend and there also was definitely some overlap between us speaking to each other and him getting in this relationship and I just felt it was odd so I decided it was best I just no longer speak to him but yeah at the time I was definitely very hurt um I'm just kind of over it now like if he didn't know what he wanted no he knew time. exactly what he wanted. i don't know that was another, maybe one reason why i was upset about it is because this is definitely over five minutes but <laughs> maybe because at the time when he first said he wasn't ready for a relationship i was like oh you just don't want to um date me and he would he made it very clear like that's not the point i'm just not ready for a relationship and then later on went on to get a girlfriend which he was free to do. If I had found a man, I would have gone to the man. But the, at the very Wait, least, I would have told if him. If I had what? Yeah, if found I, a man, she would have gone to the man. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, if I had found a man, I would have gone to the man. But the, at the very least, I would have told him if I was about to get into a relationship. But yeah, overall, um, that was my situation. I just wanted you guys to know more about what the young 20-year-olds are doing these days. And that's what I'm up to these days. Obviously, in the future, I don't plan on doing anything that's not serious and that was very unserious behavior of me but <laughs> yeah that's the gist of it i could go into so much more detail but i never know how long these messages can be and i know the podcast is usually like 30 to 45 minutes and i'm already taking up seven of those minutes but <laughs> if you need any, any more details feel free to ask but i just want to <laughs> explain i this is very common this for is why we have to go live guys saying they're not ready for a relationship but still dating you this is basically what we're dealing with at this time if you choose to deal with it i do feel like in the future i will be choosing not to deal with it and only allow serious relationships but if you um allow it this is what is happening with people my age these days but anyways also i love you guys i love your podcast and um yeah that's about it <sighs> how do we even start <laughs> Yikes. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, I mean, you're not doing nothing new. This <laughs> Actually, isn't, yeah. This isn't new behavior with the young. I mean, I guess this is what 20-year-olds do, but there are people in their 40s and 50s and 30s that still do this behavior. It's not anything about a maturity thing or, like, young thing. It's just a... 
human thing. It's human behavior. It's human nature, right? Um, Unhealed human behavior. Um, yes. Unhealed? Mm-hmm. I don't know a lot of people who walk around healed, man. I'm going to be honest with well, you. Well, okay, Everybody you're right. like they got some uh, wounds that yeah. are leaking. Okay, so I don't know if we ever arrive at heal, like being healed. We are healing. Um, however, this is like very, this is a true lack of awareness. Okay, say more. So I think about us sometimes and I think about where, like, in our relationship, how we have um, shown up as a result of our relationships with our parents and how that manifests itself in our relationship. Mm, I don't know where you're going with this. So you know how you would always want to please me because you are afraid of being hurt? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then there are things on my side where I have trust issues because my father was also a dreamer um, mm -hmm. like you are. And so... He's not a dreamer like me. Yes. Okay. So, yes. We but won't I go. get you. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. Put some respect on my name. Yeah. So, there's some respect on your name. You have it. So, anywho, what I'm saying is... Sometimes we accept behavior or we behave in a certain way because of relationships with significant figures in our lives. And she may be receptive to this type of affection or lack thereof, lack thereof for some reason unknown to us and unknown to her. And if she were on her healing journey, like really spending time in therapy and talking to her therapist about this, she would probably realize, oh, shoot, this is because of this is what I'm trying to say. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I hear what you're saying. Because I feel like, okay, so we all know, I've talked about it multiple times. When I went to my intensive, my three-week intensive, the a lot of the work that the therapist did was family of origin work. But when I went there, Glenn and I were dealing with some some major stuff and I wanted to talk to him about Glenn. And <laughs> every single time that I brought up, he would let me go there. He would let me like, okay, if that's what you want to spend these moments on right now, let's go there. And then he would all circle it all the way back to either my dad or my mom. And how I showed up in my family of origin. Yeah. It was always traced back to that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you do see the connection, right? Da, 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 da. And so I feel like there's a lot of that that happens when we are in relationships. I can't hear myself, huh? I'm supposed to be wearing headphones. Yeah. Um, I would say that I think that she got exactly what she wanted. <laughs> That's what she wanted. She wanted a physical thing. Yeah, but she didn't. She she doesn't know what she wants. No, no. She knows exactly what she wants. She got what she wanted. They got the physical thing. They were friends with benefits. But, you know, I think that there's something interesting about... It's, it's not new. Like, if you give a man sex, you won't you probably won't end up with them. Like, it's not always true, but there has to be something about you that he can't get nowhere else, okay? Now, some men, and this is just, I'm talking like for people who are like, oh yeah, I don't, I, I don't want him to leave me, so I'm gonna give him this. You know what I'm saying? Or I want a relationship, so I'm gonna give him this, right? Which this isn't what she was doing. She want she knew she was just wanting the affection. She she just was wanting the affection until he showed him she he showed her the potential of she wanted the physical attachment until he showed her the potential of what a relationship would look like. She didn't ask for dinner at his house. That was his foreplay. Th that was his. That was his finesse. Like he's practicing on mm -hmm. the shorty that he's with now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like, I right. like, and I understand that as a guy that like was straight up 
like Baltimore all the way. Hey, Shorty, from down the street. <laughs> Come here, you with the green coat. Come here. Like, that's how I used to talk to women. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I had to train myself on not to do that. So I had to, excuse me, how you doing? Um, I, I see you're busy. I just want to know if I could take you out. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I had to do that. I had to teach myself. You know what I mean? I, I don't really interrupt. I don't know who that is. Is that your man? Like, I had to learn, teach myself how to run, like, spit game in a way that wasn't so aggressive. Mm-hmm. Aggressive. So I had to practice on women I wasn't even interested in. Do you mm-hmm. know that? Oh. Yeah, I was practicing on women I was not interested in just to get reps. Really? <laughs> yes. Why would you do that? Because... And then did you have an exit plan if she did receive you? I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> what? I just knew that like that like I had to I wasn't I wasn't trying to get in their pants and I, like that. I literally just had to like get reps in. So you was taking women out that you didn't want to Absolutely. T- wow. Yeah. You was spending that money. I was. Mm. I was spending money. You were invested to yeah. land at me. I was invested, yeah, to land at a person that was oblivious to know what the heck was going on. Hey, how you doing? You know, I'm trying to spit a little game. Here. You got a MySpace. Let me holler at you online. No. <laughs> the, the 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 person has to know <laughs> that you're in the thing. Like, hey, we're both. I'm trying to get your number. You were oblivious, or so you could just really say, work. like, hey, can I get your number? No. <laughs> that would be so weird. And I would I would come off like a creeper, <laughs> especially not having a college degree. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> what? Well, being on college campus, not even supposed to be there. I'm like, hey man, take that dude's uh, visitor stamp away, and I wouldn't be allowed back. You are harassing the women on campus. But no, like I had to figure out how to do that, and I practiced on women I wasn't interested in early on, and that led to a lot of girls being like, "What the heck is going on with this guy?" Right? And it, and what it's called is emotional impurity. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what that is, it's an immaturity thing where I didn't know what I was doing. I just was like out there trying to figure out who, like how to approach women, you know, because the way I learned before worked, like in Baltimore, like it worked, you know what I'm saying? Or you were in a class with Shorty, you like throw a piece of paper at her and just act like you ain't do it. Like just (laughs) stupid, (laughs) immature stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But... I don't think he was practicing. I think he was really what it is. It's like you wondering if you could get it, how much how much energy and time you have to put in into figuring out if this is something that you could get or not. Like mm. it's literally a challenge. You know what I'm saying? That's how a lot of men see it. And I'm not saying every man like that and men of faith, I'm not sure, uh, you know, how, how dudes be acting. But I know for me when I got out here, Especially not being like really solidified in my faith or nothing like that. I just was out here like, man, I was like, man. And I was talking to my homie Garrett. And Garrett, I'm going to put Garrett on blast. I was like, Garrett, man, I'm going to be trying to talk to these ladies, man. I'm not doing it right. He was like, if I were you, I'd go up to him and say, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. Can I take you out for coffee? Did he really say that? Yeah, and I was like. Garrett, that ain't gonna work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that a little creepy, right there. <laughs> no, but Garrett is like, uh, he's a tall, you know, white dude. He could probably get away with something like that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because he's just, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's he just looks like he's very like um, innocent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was the best game he can come up with. But me, I'm looking like I got some game already. So, uh. I think that's what he was doing, but she got what she asked for. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what you wanted, and I'm, I'm, I'm. I think it's a win for you, right? Like you got what you wanted. You realize that this guy isn't the guy, and um, uh, you will be fine. You know, um, a situationship. I, I don't like those. I think situationships. Uh, I think it's just not a smart idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not, it, unless that's what you, only thing you wanted. Like, he had no, he had no reason to keep it a thousand with you. 
you know, like he doesn't have to be a considerable gentleman. Like he doesn't have to be someone that um, honors you. He just, he has to entertain you and make you believe that he wants you. Mm. Like it's, it's interesting how, like I don't have to love you. I have to make you believe I love you. Like that is, that's, that's the name of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like if I think someone cares about me, I'm mm. going to care about them. They don't actually have to care about me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the finesse is you believing it, mm. <laughs> you know? Um, and it's sometimes like me, Yvette and I have to go to each other like, man, they don't care about you. Like she'll tell me that like, man, I don't think that person cares about you at all. You know? I'm like, really? Like, yeah, they, like you're a dollar sign. Like, oh, somebody had tell me that here. Like, nah, you, you, they don't care about you, really. You know? Or I sometimes I tell Yvette, man, they don't want your best interest. They want you to serve them. Mm-hmm. They don't want you. You know? And when you get to that point, when you recognize that they only want you for one thing or they want to use you, that means that you have to value yourself above all of that, right? Now, why you got into that situation, that's not really a bad thing. Like, I don't think it's anything wrong with you saying, hey, I want this. I'm going to go get this. You know, that's what I'm going to do. You know, like, that's your decision. Um, I think you deserve better. Because I believe if you wouldn't have uh, been entertaining that the relationship, he would have treated you differently with more respect and honor. And then you would have also been available for whoever else was out there who actually had the intention to be more than a situationship. Mm-hmm. If that's what you wanted. Yeah, I think that is something that you need to decide is what you want. Are you looking for a serious relationship right now? Or are you looking just to have fun and whatever? Because I think I think so many of us tolerate. <laughs> I feel like I'm having the same situation when I think about like my life as it is. Is that Glenn has been asking me this question about like what do you want? And... I've spent some time thinking about it over the past couple of months and I feel like because I haven't clearly defined what I want, I've been open to everything. And that is like, it's very, it's a lot of time wasted um, when I think about it. It's a lot of time wasted. It's a lot of um, extra heartache and pain that is unnecessary that I've had to deal with. It's just, man, it's a lot, y'all. So I feel like if we define clearly what we want, then we'll be able to operate at a more efficient capacity in our relationships and in our lives. Yeah, and, I, and I'm and i big on, Yvette doesn't like this about me, but I'm like, don't give them any options. Yeah. You know why in and out is so freaking successful? <laughs> they got four things on the menu. Mm-hmm. And it's a hidden menu if you if you know you know if you in the in the um I don't know what they call it zeitgeist or that you you you're part of their real brand like if you're in the know you know that it's more stuff on the menu but you gotta ask for it but there's only four things on the menu because you don't have a lot of options you when men have a lot of, like that dude wasn't taking no more classes what do you mean he was taking more <laughs> you know what I'm saying. He wasn't taking no more classes. Oh, he had a big, busy schedule, and then he popped up with a girlfriend. Yeah, because he was doing Felicia one on one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got it. Like you got to like pay attention, right? So, the more options we have, like the harder it is for us to stay on route. I don't want to give myself a lot of options. What am I doing? I'm doing this. Okay, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do the other stuff. Let's just focus right here, and. Yvette has a lot of options sometimes. And I'm like, yo, nah. And the thing about it, too, is I like to have options. I like to offer options and I like to have options because it makes me feel like less boxed in. Yeah, it makes you feel like you got some control. Yeah. But really, you're carrying a heavy bag. When she packs, she (laughs) likes to pack options. 
<laughs> what are you wearing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? You oh got four days. She's got a few different outfits for each day because you got to dress on the mood. Like, no, choose your mood. <laughs> Joyful. <laughs> That's the mood. <laughs> you know what's crazy is, so this past week, one of my girlfriends, shout out Diana, came over and helped me because I've been wanting to, like, declutter my closet. I've been holding on to stuff because I'm like, one day... I'll be able to fit this again. Or one day I'll have somewhere to wear this to. Or one day, you know, you know how we do with our clothes or whatever. And then when she was there supervising me, I got rid of so much stuff. (laughs) Yeah. It was really um, refreshing. And so I don't know, I guess like, but now when I walk into my closet and I like today, I wore a dress. I've had this dress in my closet. I don't even know how long. I love that I haven't worn it in a long time. But I wore it because I could see it, and it was, like, less options. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't so overwhelming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I just feel like I am starting to realize there are key things that I want, and so those are the things that I'm going to pursue. And I think when it comes to relationships, there are a lot of people in this world. We are all going to meet so many different people in our lives that who could potentially be the one or whatever the case may be. But if you don't have clearly defined what you want in that other person, or if you don't even know if that is something you want in this season of life, because maybe in this season where you're in school, it sounds like your major is pretty intense. What did she say? Bio, uh, biomedical engineering. What do you even do? Is that like I have no idea. surgeries? I don't know what that is, but, um, Yeah, so I feel like maybe this is a busy season for you and what you want is companionship and maybe there's another way to seek that feeling without playing with your heart or his. You know, she must be real smart. You know, smart people be lacking (laughs) (laughs) the the, the sense of the common folk. (laughs) You understand? But common folk don't have so much sense, babe. You're giving us a little too much credit. Really? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're the smart person. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the common sense person. You're the genius, mathematically. I am not that. You are smart. Super. I'm, I'm really... Common sense, I think. You are. Right. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that you were common. I don't know if you're common sense. You're just no nonsense. No. I'm Because for me, I do believe there's a lot of common sense that I have that other people do not. Okay. Let's go for example. How to load a dishwasher. Okay. That's not common. Okay. Fine. When you load the dishwasher, you position the dishes such that if it's a bowl, you're not going to sit the bowl up. You sit the bowl, you angle it in such a way that the water, the dirty water that circulates through there is not going to sit in the bowl. So when you open the dishwasher at the end of the cycle, there's dirty water in the bowl. Uh huh. That seems very logical to me. Yeah. Put it upside down. Put the cups upside down. Have you ever seen a dishwasher work like the inside of it? No. Right. And I think if I have seen the inside of it and how it splashes and waters around, then it would make sense to me. But it's obvious because it has a little wheel and the water shoots up. I didn't know the water shoots up. I don't know where the water shoots from. Really? Yeah. See? That's not common that sense. That is common sense. If you look at the mechanism, you can see. I'm not looking at the bottom up. of a dishwasher. I'm no, it's to... not from the bottom. First it's of all, right first there. of all, first of all, first of all. The little spinning wheel. I spin it every time just and then this is another thing I you do. You spin it every time. I spin it to make sure no dishes are inhibiting it from actually circula- circulating so that everything gets its due diligence. All right. I need I need I need a poll. I need yeah. A poll right Y'all now. Y'all let us know if that's a real common thing cuz I feel like it is. Let's just ask this question. What's the question? Do black people <laughs> use the dishwasher? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait. Black people don't use the dishwasher. So how am I supposed to know? The dishwasher was always a drying rack. It was. When I grew up, it was always a, We Same. never turned it on. I, I never had those little cascade things. I never had I never even knew what it was. We never used the dishwasher. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. So now as a grown man, I've been looking at dishwashers all the, my whole life saying that's a drying rack. <laughs> that's what the that's where the dishes go to dry and we use them and we put them back in there to dry. So we don't have dishes all over the countertop. I get married. 
<laughs> and all of a sudden, she has a white roommate. <laughs> <laughs> and then start using a dishwasher. We don't even have dishwashers in our dorm room. It doesn't do matter. This. They all talked about it. Oh, my god. I know those when I'm late that night That is talk. not what happened. All right, what so, happened was is I was one of those black children that grew up in that black house. Yes. And I was like, uh-uh, we're going to be using this dishwasher. I yeah. used to be anti-dishwasher. And then I started having, it was when we had children. That I was like, oh, heck no. This dishwasher is getting used. Okay, check this out. What? You never brought us along that journey. That was a solo decision that we all just was kind of like, all right. I guess we're using this thing now. And we just put the dishes in there. It was no onboarding. It was no orientation. That's a black... That is that is generational curse. Black people don't use dishwasher. Okay? It's a curse? It's, it's, it's something that we don't do. You are actually... Now, let me know. Black people. Black people. <laughs> black people from America. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Canadians. I'm sorry. United States of America. My apologies. Black people in the United States of America are you using a dishwasher. All right. Not interracial couples. I'm talking black house. <laughs> Wait. I, I need black Wait. house. I need black house. Wait. Are you using a dishwasher? I hope that's we really don't important. get canceled for this. No, that's a real question. I just want to know, are you using a dishwasher? Because I that's not common sense if I've never used it in my life. Okay. I also want to know how old you are when you when you answer that poll. Yeah, because I need new to know people. if you're like our generation or if you're like her generation <laughs> or if you're like my parents' generation. Yeah, because people taking the microwaves out of their house. They taking yeah. all of your appliances out and going on. What's going on? I don't know what the hell going on, man. I go to your house. We can't wash dishes. Can't heat nothing up. Got to go outside to heat up stuff. <laughs> Sitting in the sun. Y'all crazy. <laughs> no, they use the stovetop, Oh, so listen. Okay. I'm, 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 I don't want to be disappointed here. Okay. I need to know, are you guys, like, this, like, common sense is is a thing. I feel like I have common sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, you have common sense when it comes to like stuff, how stuff goes around the house. But before you t- teach people, you'll get irritated for a couple years and be like, Yo. <laughs> for a couple years. No, no. I I've been trying to um, take deep breath, especially with our new nanny. I've been trying to like be like, you know what? I don't know if I've ever explained this or I've ever shown her this. So let me just take a moment to do that. That's nice. Right. So I feel like I've been doing better. Even with the kids, I've been like, you know, okay, guys, let me show you. But once I've shown you, you better get it right. Yeah, you, <laughs> just kidding. You know how much anxiety I have loaded the dishwasher? I hate going to the dishwasher. I told house. Glenn, I said, just load it and start it so I don't have to see it. And then when he's loading it, I have to kind of like look around. <laughs> and not pay attention. Yeah, I'll be talking to her and I'll be on the dishwasher. She'll go. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? You control freak. It's in there. Who cares? Once it gets in the dishwasher, it's magical. <laughs> who knows what happens in the dishwasher? There is a GoPro video. There is someone who stuck a GoPro inside and the of a dishwasher? dishwasher and like saw everything in there. Really? Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I want to see that. Yeah. I don't know. You guys have been with us for years. We've been on having this podcast for I don't know how many years, and I feel like the dishwasher conversation just keeps coming up. It keeps coming up. We gotta I think move we just on. Get rid of it. No, heck no. Mm. We just need to move on with life. All right. So basically, do our dating to marry list. <laughs> yeah, Sis. I really feel like that's a powerful tool. And if you have not gone to our website, you need to go ahead to our website and make sure you do that. And she's cute. Yeah. She got played. She played She's herself. She's cute. Um, I will say, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, played. Yeah. All right. How married are you? Um. I had one this morning when I was cooking breakfast. I was like, "Oh, pay attention." Oh, I'm so married. That I made breakfast for our children yesterday morning. And that's a big deal because it's your morning. Mm-hmm. The weekend mornings are Glenn's morning to make breakfast for the kids. That's the only, those are like, that's the one, those meals <laughs> are like the guaranteed meals that Glenn's going to make. Why didn't I do it? Because you were taking forever to get out of bed. <laughs> and I was like, I was so I'm not going to rush him out of bed. I know he didn't get a lot of sleep last night. 
and we have a full day ahead of us today. So let me just go ahead and make these kids breakfast. And not only did I make them breakfast, but we were supposed to be gone the whole day. I also made them um, lunch, lunch yeah. to go. Yeah, that was great. So, yeah. Thank you. I did like How that. married are you, babe? Oh, I'm so married. Um, well, I, this morning I was leaving the house and I had to pack my meal prep. I had to pack the dog's food. I had to pack, um, bring some stuff from the house or whatever. And I saw you left your water bottle um, because I knew you were rushing to get out of the house this morning. Mm-hmm. So I brought your water bottle to work so that you could have your water bottle and drink it and not miss your drinks. I appreciate that, babe. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's just, just how, how married, married we are. are. A black love story started at a step show. I was spinning top 40 from the radio. And I met this little shorty, chocolate petite. She said, Hey, Mr. DJ. I said, My name Believe. Now, with the turntable, she was trying to take a flick. I thought a photo bombing to get all up in her mix. I saw her waist snatched in her face beat. Maybe it's melanin. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe she's.